It's a lot now. That's up my slide. No, it's left. Is it? No. Okay. I guess I have to go by the button. Oops. Oopsie doopsie. Hello, Timothy. Oopsie doopsies. All right. Let's wait for the people to come. If you build it, they will come. Pretty much. Right. I can control this with this thing here. Hey, it's Bee Buds. Hey, Drew. So, let's go, guys. Oh, sorry, though, you said messy. Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Ryan. Oh, what's going on, Madhead God? Howdy doodle. Oh. Woo! All right. Matt and Tim live on YouTube. Answering your garden questions and some somewhat questionable later. We are on live, Dan. Yeah, Tim. Tim came all the way here to lovely Calgary, Alberta, to, to chill and spend some time. Why does this look so hot? You know what? I got that setting on the bed still. I bet you do. I bet you I do. Yeah. Hold on. Hold on. We're looking like crap. Where is that setting? Video settings. Video. Just for a little light. Ho, 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 ho. There we go, Timmy. Oh, hey, beer, beer wise, we got a bunch of wild rose. We're not drinking beer. This is this is cans of apple juice, carbonated apple juice. Yeah, I'm talking about in the fridge and reserve. Oh yes, of course. We wouldn't drink beer live on on TV. Yeah. What's, What's up, going Levy? on, Evie? Smoking some sweat sweat helmet. <laughs> that that sounds interesting. The, the, this street names never never stop to uh, make me giggle giggle sweat, chuckle. Sweat helmet. Yes. Yeah, I guess. Oh, so I took Tim to the mountains today. Tim came all the way out here to visit me in lovely Calgary, Alberta, as I was just saying. We went to the mountains. Yep. And it was quite the experience, wasn't it, Timothy? It was It was astonishing, to say the least. It was a magical, mystical... It was. It was magical yep. and mystical. Yep. It was uh, awe-inspiring. A mystery tour, even. I have to, uh, I have to concede I was, uh, I was flabbergasted. We're just talking about that now, Tramp. Yeah, no, we absolutely enjoyed uh, getting out of the mountains. So the thumbnail for today is uh, Tim and I in the gondola, which was <laughs> an exciting yet scary time, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. I uh, I was so basically like you're going up a sheer rock face, right? <laughs> About 10,000 feet into the air. Uh, so yeah, it's, uh, it's pretty, pretty shocking and it, it moves kind of fast and it sways a little and it vibrates so it's very unsettling looking at the sheer face as you're like going straight up at a high speed uh so i definitely got scared <laughs> i'm not gonna lie i'm scared of heights and that was like super scary but then once we got up and we got out of the gondola it was just really more awe-inspiring than it was scary uh it was really cool yeah, yeah absolutely good times good times were had by all all right, we're getting that. We got our chat meeting aside. All right, may have to swerve on that sweaty helmet. <laughs> nice. Twenty-two percent THC. That's yeah, that's we've right. been we've been hitting uh, eighty-eight oh. percent distillate all day, so we're we're a little foggy. Brain. This this was an eye opener for me today because I was recently in Chicago where I enjoyed a, a distillate pen, a, a disposable vape pen, and it cost me a considerably larger amount of money than I wanted to pay, but it was nice to be able to get something like that down in the States. You guys got it going on down there pretty sweet. But the price, right out loud, man. What you guys charge for taxes in Illinois is redonkulous. Like, uh, it's got to be about 40% tax rate because this this little half gram vape pen ended up costing me, it was about $8,590 $90 Canadian, so very expensive, where we're getting the same thing here and it was like 25 bucks. So it's it well, I mean, this one was a gram, but it cost was that a gram, yeah, that was 40, 44, okay. something like that. So, yeah, uh, so like 25 bucks for a half gram, you can kind of distill yeah, it, yeah, yeah, exactly. Very nice. And the other one that we got is banana flavored, these, these little disposable vapes, man. It's it it, just the convenience of it, really. If you're yeah. on the road or something like that, you can drop in, get a $20 vape that's charged up, ready to go. You just open the package and fucking suck on it like any prostitute would. It. Uh, the well-endowed uh, gentleman of the night. Right. 
<laughs> Where'd you go with that? <laughs> Next question. Anyway, so we're answering <laughs> grow questions here today. Um, we may or may not be joined by some special guests if um, they are able to make it on. If they aren't, well, that's not great. So, Vips here in South Jersey, three and a half grams for 54 bucks. That's like right. a three and a half gram cart? Like, that's huge. Yeah, that's giant. Yeah. yeah. Does that is that like like a disposable or just the cart itself? Because like I've been puffing on this all fucking day and I've barely made a dent on it. Yeah. yeah. Discreet, yeah. Cheddar Bob a, a discreet but genital gen, generous lover. A genital, <laughs> yeah. gen, genital lover. A genital lover. A discreet genital lover. <laughs> What's up, Cheddar? Always good to see Cheddar Bob in the yeah, house. Yeah. Yeah. You, you may recognize Cheddar Bob from past shows as Meet the Grower and live on Saturday nights. And future How to projects. Gorilla Grow? Got some seeds out. Oh, great question. JQ, you can ask prostitute questions. You may not answer them just due to lack of experience. <laughs> but, you know, I'll put forth my best effort. But let's talk Gorilla Growing. Yeah. You know, yeah, um, you're going to need bananas. <laughs> It's to distract the gorillas. They're quite ornery at times. And, and quite aggressive. Yeah. Yeah. Um, no, uh, <laughs> gorilla growing, so I, I, I've, I've done a lot of it. Uh, back in the time when it was like true gorilla, you can't really, uh, you couldn't grow. Um, the question, how, how often you should, should you check on it? Uh, as often as you can, but it, it, it depends on what defines this gorilla. Are you looking at trying to hide it? <laughs> from somebody in particular because then checking on it can sometimes be your downfall right so uh ideally a plant should be babysat and especially out in nature it can, it can be exposed to all sorts of things and, and torn down and eaten up in a hurry right so as much as possible within reason depending on how gorilla this grow actually is <laughs> i hope that kind of answers a short version of that question Who's spending the night? Whose house? Tim's sleeping over here at my house. He came all the way to Calgary. Yeah. Sure, Bob? Yeah, I'm in the mountains, dude. Yeah, we've been having fun. We went up the mountains today. Had some fun. Touring around, touring around the town. Went to a brewery yesterday. Had some, some, some good eats. Fish fertilizer, good. Okay. So liquid there organic a... I can use later in the grill that's higher in PK. Oh, bloom ferments. Bloom ferments is the way to go, Drew. Um, so there's a bunch of different ways to approach it. But uh, first off, if you're not on the Discord, that's probably the best way to, to get some of these answers because we can talk to you in depth about some of the stuff that's out there. But uh, I, would, I would encourage you to start researching bloom ferments, PK bloom ferments, PK bloom boosters, stuff that you can make. Uh, there's a gentleman who goes by the name uh, KNF Garden uh, who puts a class on who does a bloom ferment that's pretty... Uh, pretty magical and you don't need much of it uh so i would kind of start there but uh you can email me at photosyntech1 at gmail.com come and join the discord and we can talk further about that kind of thing unless you're not on it already yeah i'd, re I'd recommend the same thing join the discord we have a ton of yeah. different recipes available for our members there uh, and we can help walk you through it yeah. uh it, to try and keep things as in complex as possible uh, for myself i do a lot of compost teas that are going to be high in uh, uh potassium and phosphorus uh so i kind of gear my teas for that uh, and i've been doing quite well just kind of feeding pk heavy teas like a banana style tea um and and, and kind of going that route but uh if you build your soil correctly and amend it correctly through the process uh the liquid amendments aren't really is necessary and in, including in your outdoor environment so I, I, fish fertilizer is fantastic for a veg and it's a great liquid feed but you can totally gear back and do like a dry amend of you know a, a solid uh, bloom fertilizer or, or uh, fruiting fertilizer yeah use it for your ice peas and lilacs yeah if you're going to do a bloom ferment for flowers i dial it back like if you're feeding the 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 good medical plants with it um you can go full strength same thing like tomatoes peppers um heavy feeders but if you're doing flowers go half or even quarter strength to start just to see how they react because some of these bloom ferments can be wicked wicked strong yep yeah yep. cool 
Matt's on the move. Oh, I was shuffling stuff around. I just I was tweaking the audio, guys. If, if oh. yeah, um, just let us know if the yeah. Matt's got good a big stuff. butt plug in right now, so I, he's a little <laughs> uncomfortable, and he keeps like kind of weaving and bobbing and weaving to get. I'm very fidgety. Get it in place. I, I have trouble sitting in the same spot for a long period of time. Mm-hmm. So, but. I hope that helps, Jira. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it, it, we'll, we're happy to help anytime. Like if you need a more in-depth answer, just email uh, Matt's email. Yeah, for we'll sure. For sure. Always good. That's what we're here for. And um, guys, if you'll notice, Tim's wearing a shirt. The Living Soil Society. If you're not familiar, if you're living under a, if you're living under a rock, of course we're uh, running the Living. Yeah. We're running the Living yep. Soil thank Society. You, Matt. Yep. Thank you. Yep. Yeah, yeah. You've done a good job yeah, so yeah, far. Thank you. Yeah. Matt. Good intro. Uh, we have another YouTube channel called Living Soil Society. It's like Photosyntech, but better. Uh, I'm in it all the time. So, <laughs> so there's that. All the time. Uh, and, and so we, we give tips about uh, organic gardening, gardening on a whole. So it'll be applicable to your medicinal flowers, uh, but it'll also be applicable, perfect like pe- your peonies, your, your lilacs. Uh, so yeah, it's, uh, we can definitely help with that. Yeah. Your veggies. Yeah. Mm. We'd appreciate your aubergines. Oh, the aubergine. Hmm. It's a beautiful elongated vegetable. It's so pen 15. <laughs> <laughs> Where's Rubix when you need him? He's hiding in here somewhere. It's, for sure. it's a family show. It is. We, you know, we're about families. Families use pens all the time. Man. They do. And butt plugs. And the number of pens don't change just because it's a family. There happens to be 15 pens. Yeah. Yeah, Prowler, I would think probably next week. Yeah. If you if you did the, the cheapo shipping option, uh, then, then yeah, it's it's going to gonna take a it little took bit a while. of time. It took a Yeah. Three, um, uh, oh, it was oh. Worm. Worm got his took like a month to get to him because yeah. he took the regular slow ass shipping. Yeah, shipping so, here counts. Yeah, I mean that's on you just for being a, a cheap bastard, you know, know like pay for the extra cheap. shipping. <laughs> <laughs> if if you're not aware, if you've not seen photosyntech.ca for the merch shop, yep. um, you can get cool crab shack gear, you can get Living Soil Society gear, you can get photosyntech gear. If you buy that, I don't have to cut him in on any of it, so that works for me. Okay, yeah, so what I would suggest is either Timothy's Crab Shack gear or Living Soil Society gear. I still get half. Uh, that way, <laughs> that way it's split evenly. The photosynthetic gear, you can just forget. It. He's got a, like 150 plants that he has to feed on a monthly basis. I've just got like three so, kids and a dog. What's going she on here? Eats. What's going on here is jealousy because the the highest selling logo on the shop is what again? When yeah. You, okay. Thank when you. you combine Thanks. them together. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, it's still but, living soil thank society. You. So. <laughs> thank you. He's such a jerk. I don't know why I have a partner with him. Uh, so uh, I'd like to point out in real life, we're almost the same height, except for the size of my legs are drastically shorter than yeah, Tim's. So if you do see us side by side, it's um, about a foot, a foot well, shorter in length yeah, of leg. It's. It's like an L and a lowercase L. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Or an I and a lowercase I. I've got, I got a bigger head, so that's why I'm, I'm the dot part, right? That makes more sense. It does. Yeah. Like, this, like, dude, look at the size of this thing. I'm like a fucking weedle wall. Christ. You don't realize how big my head is until you set me beside somebody else. What is going on? Okay. Ask us grow questions. I'm getting too self-deprecating here. Wait, we can make our heads the same size through through the, the magic of film editing we'll do it in post we'll do it <laughs> we do everything in post yeah we'll do it in post that's that's what the professional guys say just do it in post yeah we'll, 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 we'll use special effects later to add the lightsaber well well <laughs> <laughs> angles yeah exactly yeah. angles no matter which way you look you're not any more beautiful so what we're really doing here today is we're going to be talking about Johnny Depp and Amber Heard. <laughs> and <laughs> no. I've been following that case with so, I no, I can't even say. <laughs> <laughs> with enthusiasm with all of the enthusiasm of a dry pair of shoes. 
the leather don't you leather. want don't you want a dry pair of shoes right. all of the enthusiasm of, of a wet pair of shoes i'd like to know what sort of circumstance you'd find yourself well, in where you'd be like a wet pair of shoes would really add to this i can tell the, you the i can tell you experience. that i can tell you that i've been so enthusiastic that my shoes resulted in being wet well possibly but still i mean did, is it making it better i don't what can I start over? I forgot my house. <laughs> Use the schwarz. Aye, aye, aye. Little moist slips. Oh, hey, oh, hey. <laughs> okay, so, uh, 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 growing questions. We're talking about growing today. We're learning as a team. How about things with leaves? Things with leaves. How are we doing? There's only 26 people in here. Where is everybody? Come on. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. It's, it's, it's a Saturday. It's a Saturday. It's a Saturday. People have things to do. I thought we were entertaining. <laughs> things have people to do. But that's what it, it, I mean. Saturday is a great day for fucking around and not being serious on camera, which is good, right? Like, this is not a monetized situation. <laughs> this isn't a monetized However, <laughs> However, Matthew does have a Patreon. I do. And I can tell you it's greatly helpful both to Matthew and myself to provide to the Photosyntech brand. That's because I basically just attached myself at the hip here for a free ride. So give to us, to the alms, to the poor. Please, <laughs> please, my children, my babies, my cactuses need your love and support. That's terrible pandering. <laughs> I mean, it's just like you're just <laughs> scraping the bottom of the ground. All right, we got a question. Brian Laylaw asks, there's a question for you. My living soil bed has three monsters in it. Very cool. <laughs> this is my radio voice. Oh, and, really? and the pH is in the soil is low. In the 5.4 range, how do I bring it up? So, uh, do I ask this? I've never just dealt with this, actually. It, it, well, then you answer. I will answer. Yeah. So uh, the answer, sir, is you need calcium, something like a dolomite lime or oyster shell flour. Um, what that's going to do is create extra hydrogen in the system, uh, bringing that potential hydrogen, that pH up. Now, it's going to be a little bit slow release, so it's going to take a little bit of time to work. Mm -hmm. um, best thing to do is potentially make a tea to get that started, make that stuff a little bit more bioavailable. But I don't know. What do you think? Fast, faster ways to do it? WCI? Yeah. So faster ways to do it is with calcium. It's all about the finer the, the molecule yeah. is, the faster it will absorb into the system, right? So you, you can, I would suggest as far as the fastest acting is to use the organic system. It's going to yep. play nicely. Uh, convert, conversely, you can make your own with eggshells and vinegar a simple process again i'd recommend emailing matt for a link to the discord we have some great recipes and people who can walk you through the process uh but liquid is kind of the way to go in general if you're in a hurry um but otherwise for your soil in general you want to have it well amended with calcium not just for the plant for uptake, but for that pH balancing effect. Yeah, that buffering and whatnot. Um, conversely, if you want to bring it down the other way, you're going to go with sulfur. Um, and that's going to allow the microbes to actually create sulfuric acid, which drops the pH that soil down over time. So if you keep in mind, you can't use something, uh, was it gypsum, if I'm not mistaken, is sulfur. And anyway, I digress, I digress. Uh, so, you know, that's, that's a good way to do that. Um, anything else to touch on there? As far as pH ranges, uh, I mean, 5.4 isn't way out of whack. I've seen it get really acidic before. Uh, so you should be able to bring that in, up up in a hurry. It re really depends on the pot size. So I, I don't know if it's you're dealing with a big bed or like a pot. Yeah. Yeah. No, I think the thing, yeah, like Charles is saying here, add eggshells for long term. Calcium is something you always want to get a lot of in your soil. So having a bunch of different sources, I like stuff like crab meal, oyster shell flour, gypsum, um, what else? Uh, eggshells. Uh, but then, you know, like you were saying, I, I love the recommendation of a cow mag um, because it's it's going to rescue. It's going to bring things up quickly. In a hurry. And it, yeah, it's yeah. not cheating. It's, there's nothing wrong with the occasional bump from some salts in an organic system. Absolutely not. And it's and not going to do anything wrong other than fix it. Quite, quite honestly, no. And and in fact, that's that's one of the misnomers I think a lot of people have. So, I, I mean, obviously, I promote organic growing. I think it's the way to do it. 
Uh, but if you have a plan in, in having an issue, using a liquid supplement to address it in a hurry right, awa- right away, if you want a perfect grow, go ahead and do it. Don't feel bad about it. The microbes are going to survive. In fact, they're going to play nice and kind of buffer that system nicely for the salts. Uh, just don't overdo those salts. Otherwise, you're going to start getting an imbalance in that kind of living soil umbrella that you're, you're dealing with. You know? yeah. On uh, no toads and applications. So I've recently done just that. Bought them and I apply with a sprayer. I've got a big chapin sprayer. And what they talk about, at least with the ones that I have, is you want a spray nozzle that's no uh, smaller than half a millimeter. So, and that's, that's pretty tiny. So as long as you've got a sprayer with a decent nozzle, uh, and what they talk about is once you've added them to the water, keep a constant or at least, you know, regular agitation to maintain the nematodes in that solution. So as you apply them, they're getting, you know, out the best they can without getting too chewed up and whatnot. Um, and they should work actually quite well. I love the spray application, the nematodes. I found ones like these pot poppers that you can get with the little pellets. They work reasonably well, but the spray application really allows you to apply that 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 nematode all over the place. Yeah, and and you're right, J and K. There's there's definitely uh, differing qualities of, of nematode available out there for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. These BAS, BASF ones that I recently uh, got to deal with the thrips and the fungus gnats work magnificently. They go by the product named Nemesis. I'm super super impressed. Expensive, but they work very well, very 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 well. This isn't a sponsored program. No, no. But we can informally recommend some stuff. Yeah. Arbico. Yeah. 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 We do give a shout out to uh, Ars Hydro, of course. All right. We got we got another question here. So so Junkenstein, what's up, fellows? I'm wondering. What's up, fellows? I'm wondering about if we could switch light cycle to twelve twelve just to get the jump on the growth for maybe two weeks. Or so strain depending, then flip back to veg. Making, this I'm would be, <laughs> yeah, I am making okay. fun of you. This would be a, t- would this be a technique of benefit? So okay, so if we could switch light cycle to twelve to help just to jump in row for a few weeks or so, flip to veg. The danger in that, no, this is, would not be beneficial. Essentially, what you're doing is you're going to confuse the plant's uh, metabolism. So switching to 12 changes that uh, uh, signal that's sent from the plant to go from rich, bushy growth to focusing on flower growth. And so... The screen's black. No, it looks... Well, yeah, we were live. Okay, we're back. We're back. Two issues. Um, pen, yeah. pen 15? Pen 15, uh, yes. Yeah, so Jane K's got it right. So basically what you're going to do is you're going to cause a reveg process to happen, more than likely. Uh, revegs are gnarly. They're funky. They, they, they get the wrong uh, DN, genetic signals going. Like I said, the wrong genetic markers going. Uh, you increase your chances of a, a, a hermaphrodite happening with playing with light like that and switching it back and forth. Uh, it, it fucks up the plant. Excuse me. Excuse my language, darlings. Uh, it's not. It's not ideal. I, I avoid a reveg situation at all costs unless it's really the only way to save a strain that's proven to be a magnificent beast. Are you late, Sheldon? You're just on time, darling. Just on time. All right. Yeah. So here's an example of a reveg plant. It sucks. It takes a long, long time to grow out of this weird, funky, single-leaf bushiness. 
This was about four and a half weeks into flower. Um, this, of course, is the Krabby Kush. Brought to you by Mr. Tim's Crab Shack. Um, guys, uh, just hit Tim up on Instagram if you want more info on the uh, beautiful Krabby Kush. Yeah, so uh, Sheldon, are you safe to have this re-veg blueberry with your Krabby Kush? Are you flowering the Krabby right now? Are they in flower? If they're both in veg and you're just re-vegging a plant alongside a, a vegging Krabby Kush, then absolutely not. Yeah. No danger whatsoever. Until they're sexually triggered, you can't really worry about pollination happening because of a funky plant popping up a, a, a nanner or something like that. Soon to flower, but vegging right now. No worries. Until you go into flower, there's no real reason to, to get stressed about it. We're still having some connection issues here. Hmm. Mm hmm. Well, I'm unimpressed, man. No, so am I. I'm not sure what's going on. From what I can see here, it looks fine. Looks like it's cleared up then, potentially. I think it's just slow to process to the smart screen, maybe. Yeah. Is everything all, all right, guys? Or am I coming yeah, through here? Yeah, let us know here. Yeah, right? yeah, they're saying we're live here. Okay. So we ignore it, dude. Okay. Ignore so it. I'm dude. looking we're at, good. yeah, we're getting something funky from Zoom. My apologies, guys. We want you to have the best experience possible. So, all right, that's fine. Um, I want you to take off your pants and jacket. Just a little glitchy. All right, that's cool. Okay. Let's yeah. see. It looks like it's coming back. If it gets really, guys, if it gets really crappy, let us know and we'll, we'll make it better. We'll make it. You're better. talking about. We'll let us know and we'll send you each a check for $50. <laughs> send your emails to Tim's Got Money at gmail.com. Yeah. Yeah. So. Giving away free money! Flashing screen thumbnail. Join now. No money. Audio is clear. That's oh, okay. The audio is the so, most important part. I think what's important, we got to figure out what we're going to have for dinner tonight. My wife went out of town with my kids, so Tim came for a visit. We've been playing and having fun all weekend. And we're going to make videos tomorrow. We're going to eat some pizza. Yeah. <laughs> and then I'm, I'm going to fly and I'll arrive at like 12, 12, 30 at night. Very late. Or yeah. 12, 30 a.m. It's gonna suck. Yeah, it's gonna suck. That video just looks like crap. Well, not impressed with Zoom. Zoom second is. Can't we just do it directly through YouTube? I think so. So why don't we do that? Hold on a minute here. Or is that gonna knock everybody off? <laughs> well, we'd kill every. We'd kill yeah, it, yeah. What, what do we do here? I don't huh? know. It's we just we could kill Zoom and just come back in. Guess Will everybody be off. offended if we just like kill it and try and come right back in? Stay. Just stay for me. Stay for a moment while we kill this and try and fix